What's up everybody, today I'll be going over a design example to determine the tensile capacity as well as the shear capacity of a steel bowl. If you're familiar with the channel, you'll know that I've released a short showing one of the pages that's critical in the AISC steel manual that we'll need to go to in order to design your bolt by hand. So make sure you have your steel manual. I have the 14th, it's okay if you have the 15th. Whoa, 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 you might be saying, hey, look, I don't need to design this by hand. There are actually tables in the steel manual that give you those values for both tension and shear capacities. So why would I ever need to know how to do it by hand? Well, this is why. The tables in the steel manual only give uh, values for a predetermined number of different size bolts. So what if you're designing a bolt that is outside of the bolt size that they give you in the table? You're gonna need to know how to determine it through hand calculations and through the provisions of the 716, of the 716, of the AASC steel manual. So I've taken tables 71 and 72 from the AISC 15th edition, the blue one. I know I said I was using the red one in the intro, but I did get my hands on the blue tables. So that's what I'm using here today. Number one, we're gonna confirm the capacity of a three quarter inch diameter, A325 bolt with threads included in the shear plane. You're like, what the heck? We'll get to that in the condition below. That's this guy right here, which two plates come together with a single bolt. And basically what this is illustrating is that uh, you have a single shear plane. So uh, between here is your shear plane of if you had a piece of paper with a, you know, a tack through it doing that, that's your single shear plane through the tack. Um, a double is your other condition. And that's important because it's signified in this um, area of the table when you are determining your shear capacity. So we will need to understand that. And then part two is going to be once we understand how to derive the capacities in the tables, we are then going to determine the tension and shear capacity of a half inch diameter A325 bolt, which is not contained in the table. These tables are located on page 7-22 and 7-23 of the steel manual, if you're trying to follow along that way. How you read this is you have a three quarter inch, we'll start with the shear capacity of the bolt, said in the top right there, um, and then below tensile. So that's your two table indicators is right in the title. Nominal bolt diameter, we have three quarter inch. I work left to right on this table once you've determined your bolt size. So designation, well, group A, B, C, A307. Well, we have, I've specified an A325, which is a group A bolt type. And right out of the gate, you're like, well, group A, how do you know that that means it's an A325 bolt? Well, let's jump into the AASC steel manual. We're gonna go over to table J3.2 to determine just that. We have a table for nominal strengths of fasteners and threaded parts. Well, we have fasteners. And if you look at the description of the fastener, you'll see that it calls out groups, group A, group B, group B, group C. And those uh, are the same that are called out in the tables previous that we were looking at. But right next to them, they say IE or IG, the actual bolt designation. So A325, A490, and then starts to get a little crazy, F3043. More commonly in the professional field, in my experience, you will see bolts called out as A325 versus group A bolts. So when you see that, don't get confused that it's something different, they're the same thing. So our problem calls out A325, we know that we are group A. So we're in this section right here, good. Uh, next is your threads condition. And what's important about this for shear is whether or not the threads fall between your, your shear plane. And that is because if you have a bolt, usually a portion of it is solid, but then it's got threads for another portion of it. The threaded condition, if you were to zoom in on it, has teeth, it has threads. I'm gonna butcher it, but you get what I'm getting at. And what's happening here is that there is some portion of it where the width, or I should say the area of the bolt is, the surface area is reduced where those teeth come together. So you have a reduced surface area, which means that you have a reduced capacity in shear for your bolt. So it's, it's very important to know whether the threads are included in the shear plane or excluded from the shear plane. And all the way at the beginning of chapter seven, they actually give you a figure for just that to wrap your head around. They give you condition A, shear plane locations when threads are excluded from the shear plane, and then when they are included in the shear plane. And this right here 
the dashed red I'm doing is your shear plane, as they have also called out. This is figure 7-1, and it's on page 704, specifically in the 15th edition. And funny enough, it is actually not in the 14th edition, so went went. N denotes that the threads are in the shear plane, which means that you will have a less capacity for your bolt. Whereas X means that the threads are excluded from your shear plane, which means that you'll have a higher capacity. We have threads included in the shear plane, which means we have condition N. This and this, we are going to skip for the time being, but you will see how that correlates to all of our calculations. The last thing you need to determine before you just pull a value from the table is whether you are singly loaded or doubly loaded in shear. And that's denoted by an S for single and D for double. We said down below here that this is singly loaded because there's only one shear plane here through the dashed green slash red squiggly line for our condition. So we are single. Today we're gonna to be designing per LRFD requirements. So phi RN LRFD, that brings us to 17.9 kips of shear capacity for our three quarter inch diameter A325 bolts. And then if we fast forward down here for Tensile strength, same thing, group A. Um, and actually there's nothing really else that you need to determine. So you can come right across, three quarter inch bolt, LRFD comes out to 29.8 kips of tensile capacity for that A325 three quarter inch diameter bolt. Let's write those down and now let's determine how we calculate that by hand. We actually need to head back to J3.2 in the steel manual, so let's head over there now. But as a quick side note, I just wanted to include one more thing. Besides that table where we determined uh, what group A, B, or C determined what type of bolt you had, it's also specified right here in J3.1 giving you all the different groups, A, B, and C, and all the different fasteners associated with each group. There's your best location, and then a secondary is uh, table J3.2. We're now going to effectively use this table to its full capacity, not to determine groups, but actually to get the meat of information that we need to design our bolt, which is the nominal tensile strength and the nominal shear strength of a bearing type connection. F NT and FNV. I know I'm drawing all over the place. We know we have a group A, and then lastly, you'll see it talks about threads again, whether they are or are not included in the shear plane. So when threads are not excluded from the shear plane, it's almost like a double negative. So be careful and take it slow with how they word things and make sure you are on board with how they're describing it. We have threads included in the shear plane. So when threads are not excluded from the shear plane, that's that double negative. So we have FNT of 90 and FNV of 54. Keep those numbers in the back of your head. We're gonna stay in the manual and move a little bit forward now to section J3.6. That lands us right here. And we are going to use this equation for both our tensile capacity and our shear capacity. Because if you read, they have AB, which is nominal unthreaded body area of bolts or threaded part. This is important right here, unthreaded. And then FN, but then they go a little bit further and they say, if you're looking for tension, it's FNT. If you're looking for shear, use FNV. We just got those values from the table. All right, so that's our equation. We have our fee factor. We're, we're designing for LRFD. So now we just need AB. And for that, if you've been keeping up to date with my YouTube shorts, you're gonna go to table 7-17. See you over there. And from this, they give you all of the bolt diameters and then their actual cross-sectional area. Gross, talking about the root, net, um, based on threads and they give you kind of a, a bigger blow up here of dimensions of these threaded parts. Well, if you remember the equation and the variable we're still looking for, AB, they asked for the unthreaded body uh, area, which means that even if you have a shear plane where the threads are included, you're not gonna take the net tensile area. You're actually gonna take the gross bolt area. And we are doing three quarter, that's right here, which gets us an AB of 0.442 inches squared. All right, we plug everything in, 17.9 kips, right on the money. And if we plug everything in for tension capacity, that also gets us right on the money. So that's how they determine the capacities to put into the tables. And one little fun thing further to wrap our heads fully around these tables is if you take phi FNV and phi FNT, those get you the values from the other 
two uh, rows in the table. So let's scoop back up there. So 40.5 for shear and 67.5 for tension. Right here, 40.5 for shear and then 67.5 for tension. So that's, depending on obviously LRFD or ASD, um, that value combined, and, and they show you the equation itself, the variables that are actually used, but that's where this is all stemming from. And then all they do is they take that value, and then depending on the size bolt that you have, they've just plugged in what the value is from that other table with the threaded parts to get you a simplified way to get a capacity of a bolt. This video is running a little long, and I think it's getting repetitive enough that you understand and are feeling more confident about the table. I know you're gonna click off the video, but before you go, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. It helps the channel out tremendously. And if you found something useful in today's video, leave a like down below. Or if you're still feeling hazy about something, leave a comment down below, you know? Let your voice be heard so that you can get that clarity. That's the best part about engineering, when you finally figure it out or when you grasp the concept behind something. So don't be scared to ask, because that's how you get answers. And lastly, join the Peruka gang if you want to take your engineering skills to the next level, get in live discussions with me about you know, uh, more than just equations, but about the practice of engineering, about the business side of things, about growing as a professional, and everything in between. So if that sounds good to you, check it out in the description down below. And until next time, this is Rich with Team Kesteva, all almost 6,000 of you, and I'll see you next time. Peace.